Welcome to the session Extensible Records Tours of the Lecture NoSQL Databases. The lecture is based on my book Advanced Data Management, where you can find more information on the covered topics. Today we will look at so-called Extensible Records Tours. Extensible Record Stores are also known as Tabular Data Stores, Columnar Data Stores, White Column Stores or Column Family Stores. A famous extensible record store is Google's Big Table system. Its authors call it a sparse, distributed, persistent, multidimensional sorted map. It is sparse because it can efficiently support null values. It is distributed due to automatic sharding, persistent because it uses disk storage, and it is multidimensional. That is, we can access a value by a row key, a column key, and a timestamp. A value is an arbitrary byte array. So in total we have a huge map that maps the three dimensions, row, column, and time, to a value. In addition, storage is sorted by the row key. A central notion for extensible record stores are so-called column families, that groups columns into sets. In queries, columns in a column family should usually be accessed together because column families provide data locality. Column families must be explicitly created before using them. Columns, however, need not be specified beforehand. That is, we can add arbitrary columns at runtime. Theoretically, we can add infinitely many columns to a column family. And the flexibility of column families comes from the fact that each row can have different columns. Let's look at the library example. We have one column family called Book Info. It stores all the administrative information on books. And we have a column family called Lending Info that stores all the information regarding readers of the books. Inside a column family, we can store columns. For example, every book has a title and an author. In the column family Lending Info, we can, for example, use the return date as the column name. We can then assign values to each column in a row. The row key acts as a unique identifier. With a row key, we can link columns across different column families. Data are sorted by the row key. To access values in a column, we have to use the full key. The full key consists of the row key, the column family, and the column name or column qualifier. As an example, the full key 1006 book info author uniquely identifies the value brown. As already mentioned, time acts as an additional dimension. So that is, we can actually add a timestamp to the full key. And with different timestamps, we can also store different versions of a column value. Next, we will look at technical details of physical storage in extensible record stores. In an extensible record store, the most recent writes are collected in a main memory table, or mem table for short, which has a fixed size. There is usually one mem table per column family. Records in a mem table are identified by the full key, that is the row, the column family, the column qualifier, and the timestamp. Once the mem table is full, it is flushed to a data file on the disk. During flushing, the records in the mem table are sorted by the full key. The on-disk data files are immutable, that is, once they are written, they are read-only and cannot be modified. This means that any modification of a record, like deletion or update, must also be sim simulated by appending a new record to the store. Deletions are treated by writing a record called tombstone for a key. This tombstone record has no value assigned to it. The tombstone masks all previous versions of the key, that is, those versions with the timestamp prior to the timestamp of the tombstone, and these older versions are hence invisible for the user. There are different types of tombstones. By defining the exact timestamp, we can delete a single version of a column. 
we can delete an entire column with all its versions or we can even in delete an entire column family with all versions of all columns. Newer versions of a deleted key can be inserted again and they will then be accessible by the user. Next we will look at the read process in extensible record stores. Data for a key can now be scattered across different sorted data files on disk. The read process is hence more complicated because we have to combine records from several on-disk data files and potentially the memory table. To identify the most recent version of a key, all sorted data files have to be searched for relevant records matching the key. Let's now have a closer look at the file format of the on-disk data files. They are composed of several data blocks. For faster searches in the data file, there's an index at the end. In the index, there is an entry for each data block. That is, the first row key on each data block is inserted in the index. Moreover, there's a trailer for some additional management information, for example, where the index starts. Each data block contains one or more key value pairs. Each key value pair contains the entire full key, that is the row, column family, column name and timestamp. The key is followed by the type, either put or delete. And lastly, the column value follows. Note that in a data file, column family and column name can appear very often. The recommendation is hence to keep them very short. Extensible record stores often use write ahead logging. The memory table is in volatile memory, so if the server crashes, all data in the memory table will be lost. That is, in order to enable recovery, an on-disk log file is maintained of all records in the memory table. This means that all data have to be written twice, first to the log file and then to the mem table. After several flushes of the mem tables, there are a lot of data files on disk. A process called compaction removes unwanted records and merges a set of data files into a new one. For a more efficient data access, access a Bloom filter can be maintained in the data files. The Bloom filter is a probabilistic method to determine set membership. With the Bloom filter, we can quickly decide if a record is not included, and this decision will also be correct. With the Bloom filter, we want to decide whether a value C is in a set S or not. More precisely, a Bloom filter is a small bit vector with which we can decide whether C is not in S without actually searching for it in S. A bit vector has a fixed length M with every position initialized to zero. Next, we need K different hash functions. Each hash function maps the input value C to a number between 1 and M. It might happen that two different input values C and C prime are mapped to the same value. This case is called a collision. Let's look at a small example of a Bloom filter. Here we have a Bloom filter of length 16. We use three different hash functions. When writing to the extensible record store for each key, the three hash function functions are computed and the appropriate bits in the Bloom filter are set to 1. When we query for a key, the three hash function functions are also computed for the query key. When all bits for the given query key are 1 in the Bloom filter, we have a match. This can either be a true or a false positive. This means we actually have to search in the data file whether the query key is included or not. In case one or more bits for a given query key are zero, we can be sure that we have a miss. We have a true negative and the value is not included in the data file. And using a Bloom filter, we have a small probability of error. The following cases can occur. A match in the Bloom filter can be a true positive. That is, the Bloom filter correctly reports that C is included in S. A match can also be a false positive, that is, the Bloom filter wrongly reports a match, although C is actually not included in S. A miss can be a true negative, that is, the Bloom filter correctly reports that C is not included in S. 
a false negative would be the case that the Bloom filter wrongly reports a miss. That is, it is it reports that C is not in S, although it actually is. And the good thing about Bloom filters is that this last case of false negatives cannot occur. However, due to collisions of the hash functions, false positives can occur. The rate of false positives can be approximated by the shown formula that depends on the number of hash functions k, the length of the Bloom filter m, and the number of input keys n. Lastly, we will look at some extensible record store systems. The two most widely used open source systems are Cassandra and HBase. Cassandra stores column families in a key space. Its Cassandra query language looks a lot like SQL and you have the usual statements like create table, insert into, etc. The HBase system stores tables in namespaces and the tables contain the column families. This was the session on extensible record stores. Thank you for listening.